Welcome back to Undercover. We're here with the Howling Bells, who uh, have been uh, travelling all over the world and you know, being rock stars and doing whatever it is that rock stars do. And now you've come back <coughs> to Australia. How does it feel to come back and be playing to your home crowds again? Even though you've only done one show so far. Right, we've <laughs> only done one show, but it's it's a very um, it's a very warm feeling. It's comforting, and it's it's nice to know that even though you spend a certain amount of time overseas, you can come back, and there's always people that that um, are there to support you. So that's encouraging. It must have been hard to <laughs> lose all of that support. Uh, once you went overseas, because you went over to England for quite a while. Mm. Well, what well, was we it like? Really was it hard it. to do that? Was it hard to start again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It is very yeah. But um, you know, you got you got to put your head back where it was when you know we were eighteen years old. I think <clears throat> when we were starting out. When you start, when anyone starts out when they're young. To try and make it in a band, you kind of got to get your headspace back there, in a way, to s to start a band again. It's, it can be very difficult. Having said that, though, we 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 kind of had that experience to kind of you know um, kind of put into to a new um, group. So it wasn't like we were babies. It yeah. Felt like we'd worked a job for a certain amount of time, and then we were going into a slightly higher you know, role in the company or something. So we garnered all this experience and and there are a lot of things that we knew not to do this time, which is which is a positive. So why did you go over to England? I mean, some people say you're based in England. Mm -hmm. Are you an uh, Australian band based in England or are you well, just spending time over there? Or? We've been living there for two years and we started the band there, so I'd say we are an Australian band based in England. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're all, we'll always be Australians, but you know, we started the, you know, Howling Bells in England. We recorded the album in Liverpool, and so, yeah. It's like we always say it was born in Australia, but it, it was definitely conceived in, to an. I mean, it's growing up. It feels like in the UK. Mm. Mm -hmm. And being over there means you get to play festivals like Reading, which you played at right. recently. Yeah, that was the last show we played. Leeds and Reading, yeah, we did both of them. That was good. Did, what was it like when you walked out on that stage? I mean, that's a, a big deal coming yeah. from... It's a big deal for any band, yeah, I imagine. Yeah. But, you know, just just coming from you know, the other side of the world and, and um, going out and doing that. What do you think, Glenn? Um, can I swear? Hey, it's the internet. Nobody swears on the internet. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, go for it. Um, <laughs> that was... Uh, it's hard to describe. It was a bit of a head f really. It's kind of you're doing something that you would dream about in Australia, that you've always dreamt of doing, you know, the festivals in Australia. <coughs> and all of a sudden you're on a stage in England where it's blown up. Like, it's, it's, it's of a much bigger magnitude. And you don't really realise what you've done until I think a couple of days later when you just go, wow, actually, I just played Leeds and Reading. It's kind of bizarre. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't catch up until, well, for me anyway, it didn't catch mm -hmm. up to me until a few days later. It's, it's, it's amazing. So now you come back here, you're uh, about to start supporting placebo mm -hmm. around the country. You know, how does something like that compare to Reading? I mean, Reading is. Reading is Reading. Reading's Leeds, a, yeah. yeah. But they're both, those, I think those British festivals, they're, they're like monsters, these big beasts that trot through a forest and consume prey around them. And, and this placebo, these placebo dates on, on different terms to that are definitely less um, exaggerated in every way. But, you know, it's, you're playing with one band and it's more intimate. And, I prefer it. You haven't asked me that, but I'm just saying anyway. I prefer. <laughs> That's all right. I prefer it um, to be like these dates with placebo. I, I tend to prefer it a lot more because, um, you know, the audience can feel what the band's doing, whereas in these other, like Leeds and Reading and, and all these other concerts, unless you're not a festival band, like festival band meaning. Um, 
I don't even know. Panic at the Disco. Panic at the Disco. You like those punk bands that can kind of get away with... Well, they weren't much of a festival band at Reading, were they? Weren't they uh, well, hit the head with bottles? Yeah, I heard about that, but we didn't uh, see Didn't see that, it, no. Uh, we were eating dinner right behind the stage when they were playing, but we, we didn't hear anything. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. But they I mean, they're, they're a really what good festival band. Because there's like 5,000 yeah. emo kids just salivating and loving every minute of it. And then you've got a band like us who, who um, who are, who are a lot more kind of atmospheric and, and seem to thrive in an enclosed space with smoke and red lights and stuff. So in, in that way, you, you can suffer a bit because it's outdoors and, and we're not a big, loud punk rock band, but the, the experience is unbelievable at the same time. Yeah, it's great. Your first album's come out recently, mm -hmm. which is self-titled. Now, why is self-titled out? Usually that's like a band's eighth album when they go, really? oh look, we're, we're trying to start again and be cool, you know, Pearl I, Jam. I thought... <laughs> Who did you say? Pearl Jam. All right. I don't... Not I, really, There's a lot of bands do it for their debut uh, as well. But. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't think about it like that. No, I just we, thought it was a good place to start. Any of us know? did. It's just, for me, it's, an, it's a nice kind of concoction of words and, and um, I, I didn't think it had to stop just at a band name. It could have... It could have gone a little bit further than that, which, you know, summed up the music well for me. You could end up doing Howling Bells 2 and 3 and 4. Why like not? The Zeppelin thing. Why not? Box set. Box set. <laughs> Want to talk about it later? We, yeah. we could be on to something. <laughs> Don't know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> hey, sure. Copyright uh, the idea. Just couldn't manage. Just uh, manage the band. What about Ken Nelson? Why did you work with him? How much impact did he have on the sound of the record? Wow. I imagine it must have yeah. like, been quite a hands-on kind of guy. Mm. I think he's a, a maestro with sound. Um, sound, getting sound, pulling the sound out of your instrument. I think he's incredible at that. Um, sonic, he's, he's great sonically. Sonically. Um, <laughs> but song-wise, I mean, most of these songs were recorded like we did most of these were demoed in Australia bar one song broken bar broken bones and blessed night and blessed night they were both written in the UK in different periods of time um, yeah he was amazing yeah. I mean he he was one of the first guys that came back to us as a producer so that's why um, it just felt like the right thing to do mm. yeah. and uh, your next single coming out setting sun what? Is it? Well, it is in England, in but England, I don't know if we're officially here. releasing it here. Oh, there you go. It's no, on it's the radio, but we're not actually putting it in the yeah, store. I thought so. Is yeah. that still, you know, why is that the one that you chose Setting to, to send out to radio and all that? Um, I love uh, it. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a great <laughs> song. Who's our publicist? You know, there's been a few, you know, that was low happening as well. Uh -huh. How do you just... Just come together as a band and say, yeah. what do you want to relate? What, what do you want to throw out there? How do you want to be represented? Or how do you want yeah. to be put out there at the start of an album and, and at the start of a career? You kind of got to think it's about it. It's also specific that. to the environment, huh? Like, we've released different singles here than we have in yeah. England. And yeah. Like, the label in the UK feel that some are more appropriate than others. And then you come here and they mm. like other ones. And mm. so it's. Does it's that mean you have to shoot different videos for. Yeah. 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 And if. I mean, we're not signed in America yet, so I, I mean, eventually when that happens, I, I assume we'll have to shoot even more videos. You could have the whole album of singles. We could. Really, nobody would know. Yeah. That's oh, it. That's good. The yeah, little secret. That's also coming out on 7-inch, presumably not here, yes. but over in the UK. Yeah. I mean, that's quite a common thing to do in the it UK, It is, isn't yeah. It? It's, it's not that common here, but they sell really well. I mean, kids go out and they buy the disc and they want the vinyl mm. for everything. Wow. So we have kids coming to the shows with you know, every single we release, coupled with every vinyl as well, they just have to have them together. It's amazing. Wow. Well, yeah. You should just release more and more of the same single. I would love over to. Over and over again. I hope we get to. It's Repackaged. <laughs> yeah. Saves you running B-sides, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. What do you do with the B-sides? Do you just, like, grab the ones that you threw off the album? Once we did. Yeah. <coughs> Well, sometimes, you know, you ride on the road and, and you think it's something cool and you just record it. Cover song? Yeah. We did a cover song recently. I think the boundaries are, are less... Um, Blurred. Yeah. 
can do you can kind you of do want. whatever you want with the B-side. It doesn't yeah. really have to fit into the bar no. the single, does it? You don't have to sell yourself to anyone. No. But some bands' B-sides have been some of their greatest songs as well. Mm. XTC. Right, exactly. Dear God was their B-side and that was incredible. It's almost like an opportunity to explore boundaries, you know, to push it more than you could on an album. You feel like there's not as much pressure or something. Well, Lou Reed's Perfect Day was a B-side, I believe. And what a good song that is. Or was it Walk on the Wild Side with a B-side <laughs> Perfect Day? Well, yeah. I, either of them were fantastic, so it doesn't matter. No. So, anyway, we're going to go around the country, we're going to play, so everyone there should go and see them. Mm-hmm. And then, back to England, you do another English tour coming up soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everyone there watching England should go and see them there, and if you're watching from America, you should sign them. Yeah. Or come to England and see and, us uh, there too. Or and we're playing a festival in LA, so if you live in America, come and see us there. Really? What one? It's the only show we're playing. The Detour. LA Weekly. We- LA, LA Weekly, weekly Detour. Detour mm. Festival. Wow. The 7th of October. You guys are it's officially you're, you're international PM. stars now. <laughs> International. International. International, wow. yeah. yeah. Well, you get the stars part. So. Later. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. How are you going to crack America, actually? That's, that's a tough one for anyone. It's a giant hammer. With a if giant if hammer. If you want to be a big hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. How are we going to crack America? You know, I mean... That's uh, a good enough answer. With, with, yeah. uh, with yeah. Australian bands especially, you know, there's been Jet and Wolf Mother in the last 10 years. Or Silverchair as well. Right. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah. It'll happen. It's, it's, it's weird. Every, if every band has their way of breaking certain places. And you read stories on other bands, and some bands break it through an advertisement, some break it through a movie, and some break it through... I don't know, it's just... So I don't think we're quite sure. No band's quite sure. Well, no one's quite sure how they're going to break anywhere, but there'll, there'll be a way, because there's so many... Uh, Avenues. So many avenues, yeah, yeah. That where your music can, can roll down. Yeah. It's always a bit of luck, too. Oh, it's always luck. Yeah, that's true it's as always well. Luck. I've seen some amazing bands that just never get lucky, and it's mm. really sad. Mm. But mm. It's a combination of luck and talent and money in the right record company and iCod ads if you can get one and stuff like that. And three million people. And lots of touring. Yeah. Three million people buying the album <laughs> does help. help. It helps. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh. Thank you.